one thing I realized after coaching so many clients is a lot of the same stuff comes up over and over again. So I figured if I can start a welcome series that gives them that head start, knowing exactly what to expect, set up with you know the expectation of what was going to happen and also pre-armed with some of these techniques that I use quite a lot so that we could just dive right into the transformation. Welcome everybody to another case study episode on Launch Your Private Podcast. Today we have Emma Louise Parks with us, a longtime Hello Audio user, uses it a bunch of cool ways. We're going to focus on a welcome series that she uses for her private one-on-one client. So I can't wait to dive in. Emma, thank you so much for being here. Oh, you are welcome. I, like you say, I've been with Hello Audio since pretty early days. And yeah. it's, you know, it's a, a mainstay now in my tech stack. So I'm excited I love to it. talk about it. Oh, that makes me happy. Why don't you take about a minute to tell us a little bit about you and your business and what your business model is? So then we can kind of dive into how you've really, truly integrated that into your business. Absolutely. So I'm the founder of The Ambitious Introvert, which is a coaching and personal development company for the ambitiously introverted who are looking for those self-leadership skills to cultivate the mindset, manage their energy, which is super important for introverts, so that they can reach their potential, whether that is entrepreneurs growing their empires or whether it's execs that are looking to climb the corporate ladder. Nice. As a fellow introvert, thank you for doing what you do. You're welcome. Very important. A lot of business owners online are introverts because there's like this like screen distance you guys can like control that access Um, 100% we can work on the couch as well yeah there you go super cool okay so tell us a little bit about how you make money in your business because I think that'll be cool because that'll fit into like okay where's the podcast coming in is it on, on the front end is it on the back end is it everywhere all of that Totally. So I've got a few different revenue streams, the main one being one-on-one private coaching because I adore one-on-one. I think it's so funny because in the coaching space, there's this big flex about like, oh, I don't work with private clients anymore. And I absolutely love working with private clients. So that is the main revenue stream in my business. I also run small group masterminds and I've got some smaller offerings of digital products. And I'm currently working on a subscription model, which would include Hello Audio. Okay, so we have a lot to dive into. So let's start with maybe how you heard about private podcasting. So again, you were an early adopter. We're like, oh, I kind of get the concept, but you dove in. What was that early days like of deciding to go with private podcasting? So I was already a podcaster publicly. I launched The Ambitious Introvert in October 2020. And then in early 2021, Someone had a private podcast as, I think it was a lead magnet or maybe instead of a sales page. I can't quite remember, but I went, oh, I I love this. So I downloaded it and it was a file in Dropbox. And then I had to click and then I had to go to Dropbox. And then my Dropbox was full and I was logged in on like my personal account and not the business. Account. And, and I didn't even listen to what it was because it was just so clunky and difficult. And I was like, oh, but that's such a great idea, a private podcast. And I remember talking to my coach, Lacey Seitz, and Lacey said, ah, I know what you need to look at. You need to look at Hello Audio. And when I launched the Mastermind a few months later, I knew that I wanted a private podcast to be part of it. So I dove right in. Oh, I love it. We love Lacey around here. Very cool. Okay, cool. So I love that. I think it's interesting. That's interesting that someone would call it a private podcast, but it was like a Dropbox file. Like to me, it would be like, I don't know. I like if it should be in a podcast. Yeah, maybe that's my like own. C3 file yeah. or something. And it was so, you know, the UX on it was just like, mm. and oh, yeah. um, I was like, no, this is not good. Thin- it's literally why we built this. <laughs> To like, is that feeling right there? And I, you know, what's funny is like, I wish more people knew about what we do because that's still a problem people deal with right now. Yes. Like I'm still hearing the, like the MP3 that disappears, the whole, put it in Google drive, but you can't control the speed. And I'm just like, guys, we figured this out. Podcasting knows how to do it. It's been going around for 20 years. Okay. The welcome series. We'll talk, we can talk about the membership too, um, as well, but let's really focus on the welcome series and how you get people like how you use it in your private client experience and what that has done for your business and for your clients as well. 
So one thing I realized after coaching so many clients, I've been in business for five years now and I was coaching previously to that, is a lot of the same stuff comes up over and over again. So if I have to spend time on a client's call explaining a concept maybe or, you know, giving them a backstory about why a certain tool or technique is going to be helpful for them, it's eating into their time. And my private clients are busy and they want results. So I figured if I can start a welcome series that gives them, hey, like these are the main three or four things that I've seen over and over again with my clients. I'm going to do short audios, like three or four minutes on each one to give you the lowdown. So you already know when I reference it, you can even start implementing it now before our first call and bring that awareness. So that was one of the things that I put in it because I just wanted to give them that head start. I also created an audio that was like, hey, this is how we work together. This is what you can expect. These are the boundaries around communication. This is you know, how we can use Slack. I also created a short audio about codependency and coaching to explain, you know, why it's so important that, yes, I'm available to help you, but we don't want to foster that codependency. And even calling out things like, yes, I'm a coach and I can support you with so much, but sometimes you may need a different type of support like counseling or therapy. So all of this was in this welcome pack and it probably took 25 minutes for them to listen to, but I feel like it just set them up for success so well because they came to the first call knowing exactly what to expect, set up with you know the expectation of what was going to happen and also pre-armed with some of these techniques that I use quite a lot so that we could just dive right into the transformation. Oh, I love this. You And it's, it's important. So as someone who has worked with one-on-one -on -one folks for a really, I'll just say a long time. I'm old and it's a, for a long time. Everything you said is so important for the client experience, especially when you care as much as you do about helping your clients get results at setting the correct expectations from the start, setting the expectations around communication about and everything. I'll, I'll major kudos for talking about coaching codependency. Yeah. Not, I, right. In this space. Isn't that huge? Yeah. Well, and so part of me is this is that example that I used to use in like course building where it's, man, you have to resell the course when you log in. Yes. This is reselling the investment. And, you know, someone might be like reselling and it's like, well, reality is someone invested probably a decent amount of money and they're like not sure they're separate from that transaction. They haven't done the first call yet. They haven't gotten their results yet. But here you are kind of reminding them, this is why you picked me. I talk about these things in the industry. This is why you might not trust other people without saying it like that. But you're really showing like your values, like the way you like see coaching and yeah, like in a welcome call, are you going to go like, here are some things that I want to review with you? Like, you know what I mean? Or like that intro call, again, a waste of time for many people. They want to get right to the meat of like, you hire a one-on-one -on -one person. We are spending time together and you're going to go deep with me. I'm not doing a course. This is about my experience and the way, like, you know, what I need help with. And so, yeah, I think this is genius. Like all, you know, our users always blow our minds, but um, perfect. I think it's such a cool way to set up and kick off a great coaching relationship. And what was really great is I could refer people back to it. So mm. some of the, you know, different concepts and techniques that I talked about in there, if they were in a, you know, having a wobble or if maybe they'd fallen off track with keeping up with certain habits, I could say, go back and listen to the welcome series. And it just, they reacquainted with it. They could ground back into it and get back on the wagon as such. I love I that. Love Did that. you, have you been adding audios as you've experienced like a couple more people? Has it kind of changed over time or is it actually yeah. like... Yeah. yeah, it's evolved. So I added another couple of things that, that came up and I even took one out because I was like, oh, I'm talking about that, but I'm finding that's something that I'm not using as much now. And of course, the way Hello Audio is set up is just so easy for me to switch one out in the same feed. It's fantastic. Oh, I love oh, that. That's, that's why we love audio here. 100% <laughs> right? why we love audio here. Yeah. Super easy. Now I'm curious what your clients have said. Have you gotten feedback around it? Because I know not everyone onboards in this way, and this is a very unique and very intentional way of onboarding a new client. So have you gotten specific feedback from clients and how, what they experienced as they went through it? Two in particular, they all love it. One in particular, who is in the operations and systems world in the online space said, this is flawless. She was like, I have never seen anyone on board mm. in this way. And 
I think it's a little bit, Lindsay, like you said, about reselling it. That's what she felt. She was like, yes, like I've made the right decision. This is why I'm here. I had another client who worked with me privately for a year. And in her testimonial, she actually wrote, we'd never discussed this. And she wrote it in her testimonial. She said, I want to thank you for recommending therapy alongside coaching in your welcome series. She said, because that made me look for a therapist. And the last year, because of those two things in combination, has been transformational. So again, not a discussion that we had during her calls. She actually referenced it in the testimonial, which I thought was amazing. So this is wow. even making an impact. Yeah, like outside of even the coaching container totally. you know, calls. Totally. That's really cool. So if someone's listening and is like, okay, I'm a one-on-one coach and this sounds epic. I want to add it. Could you, I, I know you're not like put on the spot for like a framework to do it, but what were some tips or some thoughts you had as you set out to design this? Like, what are some tips you have around that? So the first thing I thought about is creating that, I like to say creating safety. And by that, I mean creating boundaries for both parties. So what I'd found before with clients is my clients are introverted. They're very sensitive. They're very empathic. They can almost be a bit sometimes scared to, you know, contact and ask of me, even though that is part of the container. So I like to make it super clear to them that they can contact me at any time. They can send a message in Slack at any time. I have my boundaries around tech, around when I respond, and that's for me to hold. So that was one of the first audios is don't ever think, oh, I can't send this message because it's the weekend or there's a time zone difference. I want them to know that they can contact me at any time. The rest is on me. So think about boundaries. Think about setting the scene. Think about creating that safety so that everyone knows what to expect. I also put an expectation of the calls. The calls are this long. This is typically what we may do. That, you know, this is what you can expect. And then I really just thought about the main things that I talk about over and over again, because, you know, within coaching, there are these principles that we always come back to. One of them for me is celebrating small wins. That is huge because I've seen over and over again, clients struggle to celebrate small wins. So in that first welcome series, I'm saying, look, start to collect your wins at the end of every day. Just start to write them down because when we work together, I'll give you a separate channel in Slack and we will collect them for the six months or a year or however long. So really thinking about how do you work with clients and how can they start to implement that right now? And then I wanted to round it out really with making it as complete as possible. So that was talking about the codependency, talking about the therapy piece, talking about if they've got any questions or queries, you know, how to how to bring that to me. So I just wanted it to feel like a journey of, okay, I'm coming into this container, not really sure what to expect. And for them to listen to the audios and be like, all right, now I feel completely safe. I love that. Do you feel like once they get on that first call, they're even, they're more motivated? Because it is a one-on-one coach. Part of the job is, you know, they have to participate in their own success, right? As, as a coach, you are, you can only do so much. And so do you think that after going through that onboarding experience, they show up differently and maybe more ready or more inspired to do the work? I do. I definitely do. For some of the clients, there was a little wait from, you know, signing the contract and paying their deposit to we could actually get started. I was running a wait list for a while, or maybe if they're just, we've pushed it out a few weeks for whatever reason. So I think it really gave them something in that space rather than, oh, I've just paid you a lot of money and now there's radio silence for like mm-hmm. a month or whatever. So, you know, in the welcome email, that's what they got and explaining we'll set Slack up shortly. But in the meantime, please listen to this and you can get acquainted with how we're going to work together. And it's going to give you some tips to to get started even before we meet. That's a cool principle that I think we see a trend of people doing. Like we you know, you run a challenge and someone signs up through a Facebook ad and it started, but it's two weeks before the challenge starts. Mm-hmm. Have some welcome audios or some get, you know, because you want to keep that person engaged after the transaction until kind of when they start to truly get their experience and what they paid for. I love that. And I think that is another like way to think about this welcome series, that it's actually bridging a gap of scheduling times and Mm -hmm. all the things that go into schedules and calendars and all this stuff. That's cool. I love that. So, okay, this typically happens once you start using private podcasts in one way in your business, then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I can use this in other ways in my business. So I talked to, has that happened to you? 
And if so, <laughs> what are some of the other ways you have or are planning to use Hello Audio in your oh business? Oh my gosh, all, all the ways. So what I will say is the Welcome Series was this, probably the third way that I used it. Mm. The first oh. way was in my mastermind. So I run a mastermind called Quiet Power. And back in 2021, when I was mapping out the curriculum for it, I knew I wanted to have a private podcast. And the reason I loved this is it was a small, it was a small group. There were two pods of three. And what I wanted to be able to do was have the calls three times a month. And then I always take a week off calls each month because introvert. So on the week off, I wanted them to have a private podcast. So there's still something going on in place of the call. And what was so amazing about it is I could be in Slack and see what they were talking about. I was coaching them on the calls the rest of the time. And I could record it the day before and I could make it so relevant to what was going on. So it wasn't mm. like this, you know, big mapped out curriculum six months in advance that was just was just dripping out. I could actually personalize it because it was so easy for me to plug this in, record it and just upload it to the feed. So it felt very dynamic. It was a real kind of real time experience for them. And I have got some stats on that. It had a hundred percent listen rate wow. over the three months. So the, I mean, there were six people. It wasn't like a huge mastermind, but it no, had a hundred. Still, it had a hundred percent listen rate. That mastermind had a hundred percent retention rate. Everyone signed up again when it finished, and this was early twenty twenty one. Thirty three percent of those people are still clients now. They're private. Wow. Ones. So that was a cool intro offer too. So they then upgraded. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I just think hmm. that a lot of them came through my public podcast. So I hmm. knew they loved podcasts. I know they like to consume audio. I have toyed with the idea of doing video podcast and the feedback I get from clients and audiences. We don't watch it. We listen hmm. while we walk in the dog. We listen while we drive in. We listen while we cook in dinner. So I thought, well, Rather than giving them videos to watch in a mastermind, let me give them audio. I love that. Okay, so the mastermind was really popular. So it sounds like you've used it other ways as well. So what uh, were some? What was the other way that you used it? I feel like an addict. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> we're all addicted to audio. That's why you're that's here. Maybe right. that's what this show is doing. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. It's a healthy. It's a healthy audio a healthy addiction. addiction. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lindsay, and I'm obsessed with private podcasts. <laughs> So the next way I used it was I had a meditation that was something I created for clients that I later sold as a digital product. And it was a morning mindset meditation, really an energy clearing for empaths and introverts so that they could start their day and really kind of focus on their own energy. Now, a lot of resistance to this for a lot of people for various reasons, you know, self-care or feeling like oh, I need to jump out of bed and start working. So I needed to make it as easy as possible to make sure that people stuck to this habit. And again, could have made a MP3 and put it into Google Drive, but I wanted to make the experience nice. I didn't want people to have to get their laptop out to do a meditation. So it was perfect to put it on its own feed and people to have it on their podcast player and just be able to access it instantly as soon as they got up. I love that. We tend to have a lot of folks, at least I know recently too, a lot of folks ask about using private podcasts for meditations. So it sounds like this is a meditation, a product that you've sold. It wasn't just an opt-in. It was actually a, a product, that, a digital asset that you sold. And you don't have to give me specific numbers or anything. If you could talk to you, because some people are like, is that really possible? Will people really <laughs> buy it? So I guess if you could answer that question to let people know that, yes, actually, this is a thing that people have purchased. Yeah, absolutely. So that has been a mixture of, it has been a gift when I've been a part of a summit before. Perfect. So it's been something that people could have. It has been a purchase. It was, I think it was a $9 purchase. And it has been something included with other products. But I did look earlier and 97 people have purchased that one way nice. or the other. Oh, so great. some of those will have come through summits, but absolutely. And I, someone actually emailed me after downloading it in a summit and said, I love this because they'd never come across private podcast before. So mm -hmm. they loved that they could just pop it onto their Apple podcast player and away they went. 
I love yeah. that. And I think what one thing that you bring up, it's so important. How easy of an asset is it to have that you can then repurpose it? So when you are a guest on a summit, when you're a guest on someone else's podcast, and if you want to offer that as a freebie or has, you know, have it as a standalone digital product or as a bonus or as a, maybe a fast action bonus or an incentive for joining a program. And it's the same asset that's super easy to create. So it's awesome. Cool. So you're a, an addict, as we've already <laughs> outlined. What are you working on? Or what is something in the back of your mind that you're like, okay, I think I want to launch this, but I'm not sure. So yeah, what's coming from you in the Pirate Podcast space? So what's coming from me is very loosely, because I've figured it out, but something subscription based. I am obsessed with helping people to stay on the wagon of their mindset work. Mm. So I love the subscription idea because I feel like there's more skin in the game than if someone's like, oh, I'm just going to buy some journal prompts or I'm just going to buy this thing and then let it rot on the laptop. I am toying with a subscription model because I want people to show up and do the work and get the changes for themselves. So as I think about this, I think a lot about learning styles. And yes, of course, some people love to read and love to journal on things. I am not the biggest journaler in the world, even though I recommend it to people. For me, it doesn't always do it. If I can listen to an audio and self-reflect and have pauses in that audio for me to reflect, mainly while I'm moving usually, so walking or mm. walking. So I'm really toying with like, how can I deliver something that is accessible to everyone, just regardless of how they like to consume or do their mindset work, but that's still going to give them the same transformation. I love that. That's powerful. I think, and is that something that you're thinking about launching this year? This oh, yeah. Year? I'm probably looking at about April. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. All right. Very yeah. Fast. I like it. Yeah. Cool. We love a good subscription for sure. And I think audio, it makes... People talk about membership sites and all these different ways to create recurring revenue and all of that. But yeah, creating audio content is just so much easier. So membership is feels heavy for the creator in many cases, just because you're just like, oh, I have to do this and then I have to do this thing and then I have to host a call and then I have to whatever. But man, either a daily or biweekly or whatever, like audio drop is just so much easier. But also and also for the listener who doesn't have to go into a site and navigate a whole bunch of other resources and figure out what their path is. It's yeah, it just comes right to your phone and it will send you a message. It'll show a notification <laughs> that it's there for you. So it's pretty good. Both sides. I love it for that. And I think where the work can feel uncomfortable, like when we do mindset work for the first time or, you know, when we're in that self-reflective mode, let's make the barrier to entry as low mm. as possible. If it can just arrive on your phone. Yes. If I've got a get a journal and find a pen and sit down and take all the space. But if I can incorporate it into my day another way, and like you say, without having to log into something, without having to open a laptop. And, you know, as much as it's not always great, our phones are there. They're part of our life. And it's, I just think, look, if you're going to pick up your phone and scroll mindlessly, no, pick up your phone and listen to some really inspiring yeah. audio instead. Yeah. That's that. the cool thing I think about podcasting in general is there's it's already habit. There's already a cornerstone habit happening. It's like, this is when I listen to podcasts, whether it's true crime or like personal development and products that you've purchased. There's this space in your day for audio that's already connected. You're talking about, yeah, I have to set aside time and have a candle. And of course, there's great reasons to do that ritual to, to make the time. But often we're trying to get people past that maybe that first hurdle of doing it at all and the easier you make it everybody's winning there and so tapping into that habit that people might already have I mean that's everything like video can do that yeah scrolling I guess we have habits of like Netflix is on and I'm like not really watching this but I'm looking at videos but like that's not an engaged time for me right that's like my reset time but I think I think the walk or like getting ready or like going in the car there's you know, those are the places that you insert audio and you're also receptive. That's, I guess that's where I'm getting at. You're receptive as the listener to the information that you're taking in for sure. Yeah. I almost feel like audio can make people more receptive to this mm. type of work. I mean, I, I mean, for, is I would imagine, especially introverts, I think, you know, for me personally, I don't, if I had to be on camera doing this kind of stuff, I probably wouldn't feel as great about it versus. Mm. 
having that more intimate experience by being able to just pop your voice into my headphones and kind of be doing whatever it is if I'm walking or if I'm sitting in, at a beanbag or, you know, whatever in a relaxing kind of state, I feel like audio makes it more accessible to do this kind of work and, and maybe in a better way for the audience too. And I am my own ideal client because I'm an ambitious introvert. So really, when I'm creating anything for the business, I've got that as a benchmark. It's like, what did I need two or three years ago in my journey? Or how do I like to consume content? The whole reason I started the podcast is because that's what I like to consume. The whole reason I don't really do video in my business, it's not about not wanting to or being, you know, worried or shy about it. I just don't really like to consume it. So I'm just going to think my, my people probably don't either. And this is where it's really great to play around and think, oh, if, like you say, you don't feel like doing the whole performance and getting the journal out and lighting a candle and making it a big deal. But I still want to feed my brain with something for five minutes that day. How am I going to do it? I'm always going to listen to something. Mm. I love that. So good. Yeah. Not going to log right. in and get the laptop. Yeah. By that time, it's your five minutes is done. Yeah. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. The setup to do the thing yeah. always ends up taking way longer. It's the worst. Um, cool. So you actually brought up in that last comment there about a couple of years ago. So if you could talk to somebody who's thinking about starting a private podcast and they're like, how would this fit in my business? What should I pay attention to? What's noise? Um, what would you say to that person? Just do it and get curious. I mean, we've talked about four or five different ways of using it just now. And I have a fairly simple business model, but for someone that's got a lot more products and funnels that I just think there are so many creative and interesting ways that they can apply it, just give it a go. The thing for me is it's all about this barrier to entry. I don't have to worry about sending it off to an editor. I don't have to worry about you know, one of my team uploading it and doing all this stuff because it's so easy for me to do. I literally record it and, and put it into the feed. And if I don't like it anymore and I want to change it, I can do it in seconds. So it gives you that, it gives you that kind of agency to have fun and try it out. It doesn't feel as permanent as a public podcast or putting something out there on social media. It feels a lot more fluid and it can evolve with me and my business. So yeah, if anyone's thinking about it, give it a go. I don't think I've ever we've ever had anyone say maybe in some context, but what I really liked about what you just said, too, was like, I don't need someone. I don't need an assistant. Like, I just do it because it's that easy. It's that's so a pretty easy. big. That's a pretty big deal in our space. Like even I think even us like we had we've yeah. hired an executive assistant for the team. It was not started with like doing anything with podcasting because because it, it is really easy to just like throw in a video. You know, eventually we got around to that SOP and now we don't do it. but that that would stop us from creating something, that piece of it, nope. It's going to be more like the landing page and the, the outline and the sitting down and recording. That's actually what's going to stop us. It's typically not like dropping in the videos or the audios, <laughs> um, which I we say this over and over again. It really is super easy to drop in videos. And you started with that. You said, if you have a bunch of products and funnels and stuff, it's pretty easy to get at least a content-based feed up as as something that your audience would love or your customers would love. That's like the, the easiest place to start is what you already have for sure. And I will say, because no one listening really knows me, but if I say it's easy and it's to do with tech, it really is easy because tech is not my strong point whatsoever. So if someone's listening thinking, but I'm a bit of a Luddite and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to work it out. If even I can do it, then it must be simple. That's huge. That's huge. All right. Are we going to ask this question that we Go always for it, like Nora. to ask? All right. So we always ask this question of every guest. And that question is, if you had a private podcast with your life's ramblings, what would it be called? I think it would probably be called, but why? Ooh. Because that's what I spent most of my childhood saying, which my mother really appreciated, as you can imagine. Oh, I can. I'm a huge questioner. It's whenever I do any kind of personal development quiz or, you know, personality test, it's always about questions. My human design's mm. full of questions. I'm a coach. I'm like constantly asking questions. That's your job. And, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And being curious. So I don't think anyone's ever presented me with a piece of information and I've gone, okay. I'm always like, but why? <laughs> so, so we'll go with that. But why? That's good. I, I even think it. your business name is a good, like, that's like a pretty, you know, the ambitious introvert. I could see that as your private podcast too, for sure. Cool. That's awesome. awesome. Thanks for hanging out with us today. It was really good to reconnect. 
hear what you're up to with Hello Audio over the years and um, looking forward to what you're launching too. So definitely keep us posted. We'll have you on again. Will do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Emma Louise. And there you have it, audio heads. Another episode of Launch Your Private Podcast is in the books. I hope you're leaving today feeling even more ready to amplify your voice and connect with your audience in meaningful ways. The adventure continues in our next episode with even more insights, strategies, and inspiration to help you along your own private podcasting journey. Of course, make sure to check out helloaudio.fm to start your own private podcast. And remember, you've got amazing content that needs to be heard. So let's turn the volume up. Until next time.